man, you already know. Got all the questions right so far. Two more questions to go. Non-calc section. Too easy. I'm going to get the 800 today. All right, let's go to the last two. Number 19. 37% of 20 is equal to x. What's the value of 2x? Way too easy. 20 times 0 0.37 is equal to x. Yo, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Is this the calc section, man? Y'all funny. Is this the calc section? No, this is section three. So no calc section. I'm, how am I supposed to do this without calculator? 20 times 0.37? This has got to be something wrong. This has got to be a mistake. Let me ask. Put your goddamn hands down. What seems to be the problem here? Okay, um, hey, look. So tw 20 times 0.37, how are we supposed to do this with our hand? We need calculator for this. Why is this on no calc section? Okay, look. You see those kids over there? Yeah. They do it with their hands all the time. Heck, they don't even use their hands. They just use like two brain cells and they get the answer right away. If you can't do it, that's on you. Man, hopefully the curve is nice. Minus one will still get me 800. Eh, uh, the curve kind of sucks for this exam. So minus one is going to be a 400. I'm sorry. Not really. Oh, hell no. What's going on, guys? In today's video, we're going to go over how you can do these decimal multiplications quickly on your next SAT without using a calculator. And if it's your first time here, my name is John Jung. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 10 years, and my specialty is to take a student in the four, five, six hundred range to 700 plus by their next SAT. Now, let's take a look over here. This is a question you're likely to see on your next SAT. So it seems like a pretty simple question on the surface, but if you kind of start solving it, that's when you're going to have a little bit of trouble. So let me show you what I mean. The question says, if 37% of 20 is equal to X, what's the value of 2X, right? So for you to find the answer, you just need to find out what X is, multiply it by two, and then you're gonna get your final answer. So how can we find out what X is equal to? Well, X is 37% of 20 is equal to X. So if you understand how to do percent operations, it's going to be 20 times 0 0.37 to find 37%. And that's going to be your answer. And then you multiply that by two, and that's going to be your final answer, right? Looks simple. But the part that a lot of students have trouble with is going to be this part right here, 20 times 0 0.37, right? Like if it's just 20 times 37, we can just power through it, knock it out, get our answer and just move on. But when, when it becomes a decimal, that's when it becomes a problem for a lot of students. And some of you guys might just think, John, can we just do 20 times 0 0.37, get the result, move the decimals and get our answer? Yes, you can do that too. But this way, this trick I'm about to show you, it's I personally find it and all of my students, they all personally find it significantly faster than doing this. And they are less likely to make mistakes on it. So I'm just gonna show you the three steps for this multiplication trick. And by the end of this video, these are going to be very easy. These questions are going to be like brownie points. So let's talk about how to do this trick. Not, not really a trick. It's just a, I guess it's a, it's a trick. <laughs> so there's three steps. Step number one, two, and three. Okay. It might seem complicated at first, but once you get a hang of it, it's going to be very simple. I like, I like keeping things simple. So number one, the first step is for you to multiply the original by the non zeros on the decimal. And once you do that, you're going to compare the result you got from number one to the original, which is also from number one. Okay. And then you're going to move the decimal to the left until your final result makes sense. Okay. Sounds weird, but let's apply it to this example right here. So step number one, we're going to multiply the original original would be our 50. We're going to multiply the original by the non zero numbers on the decimal. So if you look at it, there's 0 0.2, right? Two is the non-zero number. We're not going to, we're just going to ignore the zero and we're just going to focus on the non-zero numbers like two. So we're going to multiply by two right there. If it was 0 0.25, we're just going to multiply by 25. Okay. So if we do that, what's 50 times two? It's going to be 100. Very good. So we get that our first step has to be 100. Now onto the second step. We have to compare the result. We have to compare our result to the original, which is 100%. So for a second, let's come, let's think about it in terms of percents, right? So if you look at it, 50 times 0 0.2, what are we essentially finding? 
you're essentially finding 20% of 50, right? By multiplying by 0 0.2, you're finding 20% of 50. And if that's not making sense, there's going to be a percent summary video right here. You can watch it, learn it, and come back to this video because the rest of this is going to be really hard to understand. So we see that 0 0.2 times 50 is the same thing as finding 20% of 50, right? And if we think about it, 100% of 50 is how much, right? 100% of 50 is how much? Just 50, right? Good. So if 100% of 50 is 50, then 20% of 50, right, which is significantly less, our result would have to be significantly smaller than this 50 right here, right? Because 100% of 50 is 50, which means 20%, like literally a small part of it, will have to be smaller than 50. It can't be like 200, right? That wouldn't make sense. But what we got from number one over here is that our result was 100, right? We're going to now compare our result to the original, which is 50, right? And does that make sense? Does this make logical sense? 100% of 50 is 50 and 20% of 50 is 100. That just doesn't make sense, right? Like 20% of 50 cannot be greater than 100% of 50. That just doesn't make any logical sense. That's why, that's when the third step comes in. We're going to move the decimals to the left until our final result makes sense. So if you think about it, this 100 right here is technically 100.0. Our decimal point is going to be right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to move the decimal point to the left right here and see if that makes sense. If we move it here, we're going to get 10.0, which means it's going to be 10, right? Which means our result is now going to be 10, right? So can 20% of 50 be 10? Well, yeah, that makes sense because 100% of 50 is 50. So 20%, which is significantly smaller, 10 is significantly smaller. Does that make sense? That's how you know 0 0.50 times 0 0.2 is going to be 10. Does that make sense? Now, some of you guys might have understood what to do here, but if it's, if it's a little bit fuzzy right now, let me just give you one more header, one more point to maybe clear things out. You see how 100% of 50 is going to be 50, right? And then we see that 20% of, what about 50% of 50, right? What's half of 50? Half of 50 is going to be 25, right? Because if you do 50 divided by two, you're going to get 25. So we see that when 100% goes to 50%, 50 goes to 25, right? If we drop it one more time, 20% of 50, can it be Can it be 10? Does it make logical sense? Yeah, it does. 100 to 50, it went from 50 to 25. So 50 to 20%, 50, 25 to 10. It makes logical sense. We're not 100% confident with the result, but it just makes logical sense. And for this trick right over here, as long as it makes logical sense, your answer is going to be co correct 100% of the times, right? So as long as you understand this method all the way up until here, you're going to be good to go. That's all there is, okay? And so if you need a second, maybe pause the video here and let things sink in. But otherwise, let's do maybe two more practices to really drill this down, okay? So let's say we have to find 25 times 0 0.2, right? So first step is going to be what? We're going to multiply original by the non-zeros on the decimal. So it's going to be original 25 times the non-zeros on the decimal, which is going to be 2, right? We're going to multiply by 2. If we multiply by 2, what do we get? 10, 5, 50. Very good. So we got 50, right? And we're going to compare our results to the original, right? So 100% of 25 is going to be 25, right? And what we found was essentially 20% of 25. So 20% of 25, can that be 50? Does that make logical sense? No, it, it doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense at all, right? 100% is 25. So 20% has to be less than 25, right? But we got a much bigger number. So what are we going to do? We're going to move the decimal to the left until the result makes sense.
So our decimal is currently right there. We're going to move it to the left and we're going to get what? We're going to get 5.0, which is just five. And does that make logical sense? Yes, it does. 100% is 25. So 20% has to be just five. Does that make sense? And last step to kind of drill it home is if 100% is 25, then 50% is going to be half of this, right? Which is going to be about 12.5, right? And 20% is going to be how much? Well, we got five, right? And does that make sense? As this goes down, we go from 25 to this and then to five. And that makes logical sense. So five is going to be our final answer when we do 25 times 0 0.2, okay? What about this one? 202 times 0 0.2, right? So I'm just gonna erase this out. Now, 202 times 0 0.2, right? So let's go to step number one. Step number one, multiply the original 202 times the non-zeros on the decimal, which is going to be just two, right? If we do that, we're gonna get 404, our result is 404, right? And now we're gonna compare the result to the original, right? Original is how much? 100% of 202 is going to be 202, right? And we're finding 20%, right? So 20% of 202, right? It has to be less than 202, right? But right now we got 404, right? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do the third step, which is to move the decimal to the left until it makes sense. So our decimal is going to be right here. We're gonna move it to right there. We get 40.4, right? So does that make logical sense? Well, let's find out. 100% of 202 is 202, right? What about, let's see, what about 50% of 202, right? That's about half of 202. So 202 divided by two is 101, so 101, right? And 20% of 202 is 40.4. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It goes down like that, 202 to 101 to about 40.4. So that's how we know that's going to be our final answer. Does that make sense, guys? So hopefully by now you understood how to use these three steps. But if you want to get more additional practice, then you can go to the description box or in the comment box down below. And there's going to be a PDF with these examples with a video explanation. So you can try them out. Some of them are going to be a little bit tough, but you can also try them out, compare your answer to my work and see if you really understood it. And if you really got it, then buy on your next SAT. When these things show up, it's going to be a breeze and they are going to show up because SAT is an exam of what? Exam of repetition. So if you guys found this video helpful, give a thumbs up. And if you guys like my style of teaching and want to learn more about these tips and tricks for the SAT and just everything about SAT math to hit 700 plus by your next exam, then check out SAT Math Accelerator, which is going to be linked below as well. So that's going to be it. Let's keep on studying, guys, and I'll see you on the next video.